Bonjourno everyone. So today's a little bittersweet because I just came to the realization that my scheduled projects on the Springer are rapidly coming to a conclusion. So I mean that doesn't mean there won't be more projects, it's just the ones that I planned on after I bought the bike are about wrapped up. So uh, pretty much all we've got left is getting the new tires on, getting uh, the rest of our braided cables on, doing the the riser bushings, getting helicoils tossed into our risers here, and she'll be pretty well ready to rock and roll and be done. I've already, you know, it's been out riding. Uh, it's been unseasonably warm right now, which I can't complain about. And by unseasonably warm, it's, I don't know, mid 40s, upper 40s. I mean, hell, Sunday we were up to like 52. So I was okay with that. Uh, but bike rides well, you know, exceedingly well. I have no idea. I, you know, this, the Springer is just impressing me left and right. So uh, actually before that, I did take a look at Custom Dynamics site and I did order the wrong lenses originally. These are the new ones uh, in the smoked. Unfortunately, I have to stay that I have found with this thick ass lens, which not a fan of, but it is what it is at least for now. So, and for any of you looking at doing something similar, keep an eye out because every turn signal lens I've seen, you buy them in pairs. So that's what I did, I thought. Uh, apparently, uh, these lenses are the one kind that I have found that are sold individually from Custom Dynamics. So I did go up and order two more lenses. Uh, those will be here in about a week. And then we'll get the rear light, uh, sorry, rear lenses done. But... Uh, and then that'll be all wrapped up. So today's project, once my buddy gets here, is actually going to be the rest of our cables. So I did order these through my local Harley, and obviously they go through drag specialties and whatnot, but it's the Magnum Shielding brand. You know, we've got the throttle cable, idle cable, and our new clutch cable that we're going to be tossing on today. And hopefully this one doesn't turn out to be as long of a video as the lighting video so i apologize for that i try not to get that long-winded but that one just kind of turned into what it was so uh once my buddy gets here we're gonna get cracking along pulling those housings apart getting cables out of there get parts flying uh it's gonna be a typical t27 t25 to open the housings you know gotta remove my air cleaner you know get that out of there this is probably going to be some T25s, I'm guessing. Uh, everybody's air cleaner is going to be a little bit different. This is mine. Uh, but, you know, that is eventually going to go away. That's going to be one of those SNS teardrop air cleaners because they're just sexy and, and it works, I think, on this bike. I, I really wouldn't feel like it flowed with the street glide of the Fat Boy. But with the Springer, I think it does. And I'm still a little tossed up. Like I said, this is my buddy's 17 Heritage seat about going with a Saddleman Renegade, which is the same thing I've got on the Fat Boy. Or La Pera makes uh, the Bare Bones, which is also really good looking. Uh, so uh, both options are going to be in that 300 to 350 range. I don't know. We'll see. The air cleaner is about 300 and I'm fresh out of budget. So, uh, we're gonna get to cracking, pulling housings. You guys have seen me pull the housings. I'm not gonna worry about that, but I'll come back and get you once the housings are open and we're starting to disconnect things. So, one sec. All right, so progress has been made. Cables are removed. So, get your little light here. And if this comes through, we had our throttle cable on the front of the, I don't, I don't know, the carburetor or arm spool. I don't know, whatever that's technically called. So the throttle was on the front, idle was on the rear. Then there's these two little ferrules or whatever they're called, sleeves, that they feed down through. Again, front, throttle, rear, 
idle. I don't think you're gonna be able to see the rear one, but it is back there. Uh, and they just kind of pulled everything out. I'm hoping that we can feed the new ones through here, down here, without having to pull the tank. We'll see, worst case scenario, I have a pump to pull the half a tank or less of fuel out of here and into a gas can, but we're gonna see if we can't do this the hard way first. So, wish us luck. I guess before we get to that, figured we'll fill you in here. So the new cables, this is our throttle cable and it's got a silver end. This is our idle cable. It's kind of got a goldish bronze hue to it and it's got a spring on that end and there goes the throttle cable. But this one's got the spring on the end that sits inside of that bucket that you weren't able to see on camera, but it is there. And with Magnum, they do include two new brass ferrules in case you, like us, lost one or almost lost one. So kudos to Magnum. I appreciate them looking out for my stupidity. So now back to what we were doing. Yet more progress made. So it turns out, did go ahead and obviously pull the tank off. Um, that was a bitch and a half, but it's out of there. Uh, no major damage. So, uh, but we were able to obviously get the cable routed behind this rubber, uh, I don't know, cover, bonnet, I don't know. But you know, now you can see that second bucket I was talking about that this cable is going to fit into if it focuses and this red spring goes inside that bucket and ties in down to this uh, wheel back in here. So since I've got the tank off and I couldn't reach any of this to douche it earlier, we'll go ahead and uh, douche our heads. So we'll get that in, we'll get the throttle laid in wipe this up and then that's gonna be it for tonight because it's eight o'clock and uh, tired. So we'll pick this up tomorrow or the next day or here soon before I forget where all the nuts and bolts go and keep doing what we do, so. All right, so day two, making some progress. Just got home from work, had to run down to O'Reilly's and get uh, some fuel line because we did snip the fuel line crossover underneath it was old anyway, so might as well pick up some new fuel line. There's a breather hose right on top of the tank that had gotten really brittle. So I went ahead and picked up some 3 16 uh, line to replace that. Just little chunk of breather. And of course you can't buy anything less than two foot chunks out of O'Reilly's, but hey, you know, whatever. I've got more than I'm ever gonna need. So you can see we got the new cables in and they're really simple because they just pull out and then push in. There's no nut, no screw, nothing. They're just press fit in with a little gasket that helps keep them in place. The controls here are just kind of whoop, loosely in place because obviously I'm gonna have to sit on the bike, realign everything and spend, you know, 63 weeks dicking with mirrors because that's how I am. So while I'm at it, while I've got the tank off, I think I am going to try and reroute this electrical a little bit because full right lock you can see it it gets just a little snug i mean i still got slop but it just it could be better so i'm going to try to see if i can't make that a little bit better uh because rather to have too much slack than not enough and risk pulling a wire so i'm gonna keep trucking along on that i'm gonna get to the clutch cable next I'm hoping I can just loosen the support brackets there, maybe loosen the head bolts here uh, and pivot the exhaust out so I can get to these two Allen heads here. I'm hoping, I really don't wanna have to pull this exhaust if I don't have to, namely because I don't have new exhaust port gaskets. So um, I guess we're just gonna reroute some wiring or at least attempt to and before i actually crack into this case i am going to put the bike back down on the ground over on the side stand to try to minimize the loss because i don't have new transmission fluid uh i shouldn't lose a lot i know i will lose some but we'll get that back in there it's got it needs a three hole change anyway so we'll get that taken care of so uh we'll check back in when we're ready to 
start hammering out on that clutch cable, so stay tuned. All right, so I didn't show you the whole removal of the clutch lever because we did that on the Fat Boy. Uh, so you can see no more clutch, clutch cable across the floor. So you just kind of loosen that jam nut and just spin this collar all the way up to get a bunch of free play in the cable here. And you just take that out. There's a plastic pin inside, remove that lever comes free, which I have stashed up here. And what I've been working on this whole time is I pulled all the heat shields because I kind of wanted to see how this looked without heat shields since apparently according to Thunderheader's website, they sell the pipe separate from the heat shields. So I figured what the hell, let's check it out. It's still dirty, but I'm kind of digging the bluing, you know, in various places. I'll still go through it, clean it up better, hit it with some uh, brass wool or bronze wool or quad aught steel wool or something, you know. But, uh, you know, this is just kind of, you know, here for now. I did loosen up the head bolts, not that it took much. They were already pretty well loose. Uh, popped it loose from the support bracket. So now I've actually, I can pull this away, away a little bit that I think I can get this Allen key in to loosen those up. And it's a 3 16th all the way around. I believe the bolts are different lengths. We'll find out as I pull them, but I'm still gonna set them down, kind of down here in a similar order in which they came out because I don't feel like getting a piece of cardboard and drawing the shape and putting it in cardboard. Plus, I think I threw out all my cardboard. Uh, so I'm gonna work on getting these all loose and then we'll pull this away. Still gotta pull the dipstick, uh, so don't freak out. And then we should be able to pull this out and free up the, the clutch cable. Again, we did something similar with the Fat Boy. I don't know if I caught it on camera, but I'll try to get it here. But there are far better videos out there than what I'm gonna do. But I'm still gonna try for you guys. So let me get back to turning some wrenches and see if we can't crack this loose. Got it back on the side stand without making, hopefully without making too much of a mess, but we'll see what happens, so. All right, so it is off. The bolts were all the same size, so fortunate for that. And since the last time I did, a clutch job. I did pick up some cheap ass uh, C clip pliers, so I was able to remove this. And inside, so this guy's on a what's called a ball and ramp setup. So when you actuate, it lifts up, engages the clutch on the high side, opens your plate so you can shift gears or something like that. But your clutch cable comes in through here, catches in this guy. So all we did was lift that up. There's the balls. Don't lose your balls. And then that slides out. You can set, I set that back into place. I don't lose nothing. My balls stay place, stay in place. And then your clutch cable just pulls out from there. So now putting it all back is just a reverse of what we did. And yes, I did get a replacement gasket. I am going to you know, swap the gaskets. So I at least planned that far ahead. So I'm gonna get back to two hands, get this all set up, get it back into place, and the clutch will be just about done. All right, so gasket replaced, cover on, everything tightened up. This, uh, the clutch cable going into the cover, you just kind of thread on there, and when it touches, go ahead and put it on and then just snug it down. I mean, it's, the torque spec on this is so minimal, you don't even need a torque wrench. You know, just a little bit of, uh, okay, that's it, you know? And don't be like me. Don't get this, uh, the cable into the housing and that C-clip, that giant ass C-clip back into place and go, oh shit, I forgot to put the gasket on the clutch cable. So, anyway, had to take it all back apart with my cheap ass Harbor Freight you know, circ clip wrench, C-clip wrench thing, and then put it all back together. So, it's routed. Right now it's just over there laying on the floor. We're gonna run that up, figure out the best uh, route we wanna go for that, 
and god i die hope because i'm an idiot and didn't dry fit it but it should work it's two inches longer than stock stock made it it was just tight so if anything i'm gonna have a little excess but again better to have too much than not enough so i'm gonna go ahead and get that routed get that set up and uh, the neat thing about magnum let me take over the workbench here is they send you with an extra gasket to go into that uh, transmission side cover we get a new plastic bushing to help hold the the uh, clutch together with the cable and then you get these double-sided zip ties or two-way zip ties so that way you can do what they're showing here zip it to the frame zip it to the cable and the twain shan't meet so I'm gonna figure that out take that and that and we'll get that all uh, situated and I think that's the hardest part of uh, this whole project was doing that damn clutch cable so let me shut up and get back to work all right so day three and this is where we're at got our, our throttle cables on our brake lines on our clutch cables on still got to adjust this uh, clear heat shrink here I'm gonna put the windshield on and see if this comes in contact with it. I think it will, so that's gonna kinda of help me determine where I'm gonna put this, so that way I don't put any wear marks on the windshield. Went ahead and adjusted the cable to the housing, should be between a 16th and an eighth of an inch free play here. Since it was apart, went ahead and cleaned that up, had a bunch of grime in there. I still have to get back into my clamshell because there is a little piece of plastic here that goes under the grip. So I gotta pull the throttle cables off of the grip, put this in, so that way when I, if I ever spin this throttle lock, this serves as a brake pad more or less to apply pressure against the, the grip and maintain speed. Now mind you, it's not like an electronic throttle, but it'll at least maintain the same speed if you're going straight, not on a hill. So going to, like I said, come through, clean up the heads, you know, clean up the backbone here all before the tank goes on. And before the tank goes on, we got to replace some fuel line because all I did was cut this. This is about a six inch, five sixteenths fuel line. And then there's a breather one, breather hose up here that's a 3 16th, so that's just, you know, two inches of fuel line that I got for there. So we got that, we got that, and then some new hose clamps instead of those one and done clamps that, you know, Harley likes to use. So I'm actually gonna lengthen this by about two inches, uh, when we get a total of eight inches, so that way if in the future I need to move the tank a little bit, I will have more free play to slide back or lift up or whatever if I need to access something under here for whatever reason. So, and two inches just gives me enough free play without having too much slack that's gonna rest on the head. So, I'm going to grab my wonderful little super clean foamer spray and, you know, give her jugs a good douche because can't have dirty jugs got to clean them up with some foam so that's about all I've got I'm not going to you know show you the the reinstall of the tank or anything like that I'm just gonna get it done and wash my hands of this project and start figuring out when I'm gonna pop these wheels off and get the tires mounted so that really is all I've got uh, questions comments concerns drop them down below I always get back to you uh, if you would like subscribe it's a huge help to me you know if you want or be like some people and <laughs> thumbs down the videos either way but uh yeah that's it y'all take care we'll catch you next time